My friends, welcome back. Here you are. Where have you been? <laughs> I know you've been just around. Thank you. Thank you for everything that you do. Thank you because you um, encourage me when I need encouragement. All of us, we need encouragement. Is there anyone there that doesn't need encouragement? Come on, lift your hands up. No? <laughs> there is no one that doesn't need encouragement. We all do. We all feel so vulnerable many times. Even a guy, now I'm getting closer to what I want to talk to you about, even a guy like Terry Crews. Do you know Terry Crews? He's one of my favorite actors. He always makes me smile as a good comedian. He's as well uh, taking care of his body. Not just his body, his soul as well. He's a Christian conservative. You could see that easily if you only listen to him. God had a special lesson to deliver to Terry. And he arrived where he is today through a lot of pain, a lot of sufferance, a lot of sacrifice. He lived a very hard life indeed, which I was not aware for a while long while and then I discovered something about him I'm going to show it to you right after I do this presentation this introduction him talking about his pain of living in a broken family and I touch me as well I know what he feels I don't want to get personal but I know it, what does it mean to live in a household in which there are screams and you see violence uh, and all that. I know, I know very well. Well, it is what it is. So I want to share this uh, powerful testimony of Terry Crews, just four minutes, but the essential four minutes that I'm sure will inspire my own community here, over 2,000 subscribers. We're getting closer to 3,000. Thank you, guys. Thank you from all my heart. I appreciate it. And when we reach uh, this uh, 3,000 number, I'm gonna do a, a video in which I'll show you my gratitude. But let's go back to Terry, shall we? So, uh, this is his testimony here and let's uh, learn, let's learn because we need to learn and uh, not just uh, remain there learning apply, apply, keyword here apply in your life what you learn from others because if you hear and we learn but it remains uh, just a theory, just a notion, just an idea and we don't apply, then it doesn't have much value if nothing at all. Knowledge without practice is not really knowledge. Okay, so three, two, one. Let's go. My earliest memory is my father hitting my mother in the face as hard as he could. And I remember seeing her on the floor. And then looking at him, this giant of a man who I thought, my God, he says he loves her. What is he going to do to me? And all I could think, I want to protect her. I want to protect her. And how wrong it was. And I said, I got to be strong. And I got to get strength so that I can protect her. And every time he came home, we were scared. We didn't know. I literally wet the bed till I was 14 years old because I didn't know what was gonna happen. I would wake up to glass breaking, uh, to sounds, people screaming, and it was a nightmare. We lived a nightmare for years. And I remember my mother coming into our room and saying, we're leaving. Pack our stuff. We're out of here. And we would grab everything we had and we put it in garbage bags. And we'd tie it up and we'd wait to go. Then she'd come back in and she'd say, we can't go. We can't leave. Where am I going to go? 
And I just remember feeling like, let's go anywhere. I don't care. We could be on the street. But she couldn't do it. And he went on, terrorizing us, terrorizing us forever. And it was like, what could we do? You have to understand that people in this situation feel entirely hopeless. Hopeless. We were hopeless. So many things. I thought, I'll never be like that. I'll never do that. But then I picked up a lot of other damaging things that come from that trauma. A lot of other things that had been assimilated into my life. Here I am. As a man, I felt like, hey, it's my way or the highway. I remember times with my daughter, Azriel, and I would yell at her as if she was a 30-year-old man. I constantly apologized, constantly called them and say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Daddy didn't get it. Daddy missed it. And that woke me up. It woke me up. It was a catalyst that changed my life forever. Because here I was, a very successful man. Very successful. But what you have to realize is that success is the warmest place to hide. It does not matter what you look like. It doesn't matter. Anyone, anywhere can be victimized. And no man, woman, or child should ever put up with being treated as less than a human being, ever. How did we get that far off when people are looking the other way, when, when the whole thing is geared where you can't ask for help or you are going to lose your job? Or if you bring it up, how in the world are you going to afford an attorney in order to fight this case? You need three things in order to come forward with, with a lot of your damage and things that happened to you. You need distance emotionally, you need distance financially, and you need distance physically. Coming out with your story is probably one of the hardest things ever. And this is one thing I love about what Safe Horizon provides. It's a safe haven, this place to go, the services that people need. And I'm telling you, this is my fault. This is more valuable. You know, I'm, I'm promoting the movies, TV shows, and the whole thing. But I want to talk about this. I want to talk about this. Because it's fixable. So understand. This is something that you, we, we can be deprogrammed. This is it. We have to speak up. You can see it, but you have to show people you are changing the world.